Hey, hey, it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. Is it spring yet? I'll wait. <laughs> Seriously, guys, okay, I can't do this. If you're wondering if you even clicked on the right video, I assure you, you have. I was just trying to make a point. That's right, today we're gonna discuss how to not look like a beached whale, like a lead marshmallow, like the Michelin Man during this winter season. Honestly, I do love winter for the fact that it's super easy to dress modestly and cute. And of course you can have fun with all the different layering pieces and things like that. But there are definitely a lot of challenges and pitfalls to be aware of when it comes to dressing modestly, femininely, and honestly just the practicality of it all in the winter time, it can get a little dicey sometimes. And I feel like you always have to pick one or the other. Do you wanna be warm? Do you wanna be cute? can hardly ever have both. Well, that's not necessarily true. I do apologize for my voice. It's very husky after um, I had a voice cold, I guess. And I'm so glad it came back because now I can film this video. But I've been getting some different style questions and comments on Instagram and I thought, you know what? Fine, we'll make another video. You guys have been asking for it and it's always fun to sit down and just have a girl chat, talk about fashion. It doesn't really matter, guys, we know that. But it is a fun topic and it does affect all of us in some capacity. I am a Mennonite, and so while these tips will be helpful to just about anyone, I just wanted to put that little disclaimer in there. I'm gonna speak from my experience and my lifestyle. So if you're ready to get going, hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you like fashion content. Let's get started. So I've been getting pretty many questions actually on Instagram randomly about fashion and style in the winter and so I actually put a post up and asked you guys what do you want to know because to me it's super easy to dress modestly in the winter and that was never really a struggle but I realized ah yes there are definitely some pain points and challenges that winter brings so one of the main concerns you guys had was how to dress comfortably without looking frumpy and lazy and I totally get that one so my first tip for you is to have an everyday casual formula that you kind of wear every day and you just switch it out with different pieces. So let me explain. I will link everything that I mentioned down below that I can. I tried to source a lot of these things from Amazon so it's universally available. And I know sometimes you guys say you struggle to find good quality things there and I have done the research so I wanna share the things that I found that are actual winners. So for your base layer, you're gonna to wanna to start with some black leggings and then a black thermal basic tee I like this 32 degrees one. It is super soft and warm and it is pretty much indestructible. And then a black skirt of your choice. I like a midi skirt so that I have more movement. This one here is actually from Amazon of all places. It's the Lexi Jeans brand. I will link it below. It comes in so many sizes and a ton of colors too. I will say since I chose the jet black, it is picking up on lint a little bit, but it's fine. We can solve that problem. And the reason I like the black leggings with the black skirt is that it kind of makes the leggings disappear. You don't really think about them. And then you're just going to put on some comfy cozy socks. These are some of my favorites if you're going to be staying home. And then if you're going to be going away, throw on some ankle boots. So that's the basic uniform. Now you can totally switch this up in so many different ways. And if your skirt is a little bit fitted, I actually kind of like that look because you're going to be adding bulk on top with your tops. So like a long cardigan or a pullover or a button down shirt a vest, corduroy jacket, jean jacket. It's just so many options. You know, I can show you examples for, you know, half an hour. That's your basic outfit. And then if you're going away, you just slip on some ankle boots and then your coat can go over top, covers everything else underneath. And all that you have sticking out is black. So if you have a colorful coat, it still looks nice. You don't have to try to match, you know, your, your green coat to your plaid skirt or something like that, you know? Another reason I like this idea is when you throw in a coat, then the bulk is more on the top might even throw on a scarf or something. And then you're a lot more slim down from the waist down with your like more fitted skirt. You have your tights or your leggings and then your boots. Another great thing about this formula is that you can totally wear it to run errands, go to the grocery store, the post office, or it could even be very dressy actually if you need it to. Okay, another tip I have if you don't wanna look so bulky is I think sometimes you can just look so drowned and swallowed up when you have on your coat, your scarf, maybe your hat. And then you have a purse yet draped across your shoulder or even crossbody, you know? It's just like so much stuff. So here's an idea, it might not work for everyone, but what about just skipping the bag altogether and just putting your phone and your credit card or whatever in your pocket and going down the road? Yes, I do use credit cards, controversial. Okay, we won't get into that here. I do this a lot when I run into a store or something. I don't need all the things. My baby's a little bit older. I don't need to take the diaper bag with me. And honestly, it just makes me feel less 
what's the word? I don't know, it makes you feel less shushlik for Dutz. I don't know. <laughs> There's a Dutch word and I can't think of it. Anyway, um, it just makes you feel a lot more put together, a little more calmed down and not so rammy jammy. If you feel me, you feel me. Okay, another tip that's gonna be pretty highly debated if you live in Canada or anywhere north of me, I did forget to say I'm in Pennsylvania, um, but do you really need the coat? I know, I know, I can't believe I said it, but honestly, there's a lot of days in the winter, like today's like a 50 degree day in January. It happens, I mean, it's not always blustery and windy. You know, do you always need the coat? Especially if you have like a big giant puffy coat that I started this video out in. You know, there might be other solutions. There is a trend that I keep seeing on Pinterest of wearing a turtleneck sweater, cable knit sweater, underneath a jacket, and that adds so much warmth, especially if you have a thermal layer underneath. You don't need to look like a frumpy marshmallow Christmas caroling or taking your kids to the park or whatever. You know, you might not always need the big giant coat. Just something to consider. Definitely isn't gonna work for everyone. Another main staple you might wanna have in your wardrobe besides a black midi skirt would be a sweater dress. I am in the midst of designing the perfect sweater dress, so stay tuned for next year. Good things take time. Um, but there are sweater dresses out there. If you look around, you might have to size up several times. I would say definitely look for fabrics that are nice and sturdy. You wanna make sure that they have some body to them so they don't show every little line. And then definitely size up so that they're not like suctioning you in and hugging every single lump and bump, you know? Um, but another tip that I like to do with my sweater dresses is to wear something longer, like I'm wearing today, in so that it covers your butt in the back and you don't really have to worry about that area at all. It can definitely be super modest. This style is not for everyone, but I do think if you'd give your sweater dress a try, that you might actually grow to love it. Also, I will say, if you're wearing like a cream colored dress and then you're wearing those black leggings that we've been talking about, it's gonna definitely draw people's eyes to your legs. So maybe be a little bit cognizant of that, get a lighter color or something so it doesn't like, you know, you want people looking at your cute outfit, not your black random leggings sticking out down below. Another reason I do like to gravitate a lot towards midi skirts, even in the winter, is that I feel like when you give some shape, like there's legs on this lump, you know, it makes you feel a little bit more like a person. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just a giant long column and you look like a tent. I had a couple questions in here about how to avoid looking like a tent. Um, and that can definitely happen if you're wearing like a nice long pea coat, which I still would love to get one, a classy pea coat. And then if you have like a maxi dress underneath that yet that flares out, um, it, you can just look like one giant long triangle. And maybe you're fine with that. Maybe you like that actually, I don't know. It's definitely very modest, but I feel like sometimes it can feel like everything's just too much fabric. Another Amazon find that I wanted to shout out here are these fleece lined tights. A girl from my church told me about them and I still am not a lover of tights, but if I'm gonna wear them, it's gonna be these. I love how they are super thick, but because there's like a skin colored fleece underneath, it doesn't look like those grandma's thick stockings from you know the 1950s. It looks more like they're sheer, when they're not even at all, these things are super duper thick, super warm, but they still look classy and comfy and, you know, not your grandma's stockings. <laughs> what am I saying? My grandma has great style. I need to pick a different quote. Also, don't feel like you have to totally forget about all your summery dresses. You can totally kind of repurpose them for winter. One thing you can do is throw on like a cable knit sweater, kind of tuck it up, and you have a whole new look. It's, it looks like a top and a skirt, but it's really just a dress. I love jumpers for this too. You just wear short sleeves in the summer with it, long sleeves in the winter. Maybe you have more of like strappy dresses that you can wear with a long sleeve shirt underneath. Yeah, your dresses are a lot more versatile than you would imagine. Another thing that seems to confuse people a little bit is how to just pull everything together. The fun of cold weather fashion is also sometimes the hard part. You know, layering and mixing pieces and finding new ways to wear stuff. It can be a lot of fun, but it can be kind of confusing. You can soon, before you know it, end up with an entire mountain of clothing on your floor needing to be put back on hangers again. Trust me, I know, it's very frustrating. But if you accidentally or kind of on purpose stumble across a cute outfit when you're trying to get ready for something, but maybe it's just not the right outfit for that time, take a picture of it. You'll come back to it later if you feel cute in it. Maybe it's just not the right day for it. Um, you can come back to that again later and remember, oh, I wore that belt with that skirt and then, you know, and remember how you tucked everything in and whatever else. And it's just like a good resource for you for later. You can even batch do this and come up with a bunch of new outfits at the beginning of a season if you're really dedicated to looking cute. <laughs> I don't care that much. I just enjoy putting on what I feel like I'm in the mood for in the moment. But you do you, whatever. I just thought I'd throw that tip in there because I've used that on several occasions, especially with those more complicated layered looks. 
and you just kind of have to remember the recipe or the formula that you just discovered. Okay, and then for your head, pulling your hood up is great. Wearing a beanie is awesome. I will say my favorite tip for a way to wear a beanie is don't just pull it over your head and run out the door, um, especially if you're gonna be you know, somewhere where you care about how you look. Put the hem, the rim of your beanie about an inch or two back from your hairline, pull it down over your ears, pull out a few tendrils so that you don't look like you're completely bald. And then if you have like that weird peaky cone in the back, what I like to do, this is my own personal taste and style, you do you, but I like to take it and then pull it down and tuck it into the back so that you have more of like the 1920s cloche style look rather than like the pointy elf hat type of thing. So I don't know, I just thought I'd throw that tip in there if that's helpful for you. Or if you don't wanna mess your hair up, if you get, want to get somewhere and then take your beanie off and your hair is all over the place, I found some really cute fluffy earmuffs on Amazon. They're really cute and comfortable and fun. I don't know. I feel like, can, can't you be 30 years old and still have fun with your accessories and stuff? I don't know. I do. I enjoy it. So don't take yourself too seriously. Buy yourself a pair of earmuffs and you can be the cute stylish mom out there pulling her kids around on the ice. I don't know. Also, I know I didn't show you a lot of dressy winter outfits, but I will show you a bunch of my favorite dresses here on screen that I can get from Amazon. I will try to link the size that I wear down below and then you can totally adjust up or down as needed. Again, I wear dresses even in winter just with all those thermal layers underneath or a jacket, sweater, cardigan on top. Maybe a breezy dress is not the first thing I reach for when I'm out, you know, playing in the snow with my kids, but I go to church every week and to Bible studies and there's plenty of occasions I found in the winter to wear pretty dresses. So I don't know, I feel like winter wardrobes can kind of feel stale and blah after a while. So mix in a dress or two here and there and you'll feel like a whole nother person. And you know what? You can always pretend spring's around the corner because it eventually will be here. Okay, I know it's getting dark here, um, but I wanna quickly go through a rapid fire SOS round where I answer some of your questions here that you have on Instagram and just do them really quickly. A lot of these I've already addressed, so this shouldn't take too long, but this is always fun to get your guys' input. How to wear leggings with dresses and still be cute? Again, like I said, it helps a lot if you can wear the same colored leggings as skirt, it kind of blends together. I even have a pair of nude leggings and they just kind of like disappear into your outfit. Somebody says they live where it's actually not even safe to go out, it's that cold, negative 45 degree wind chill. Iowa, that sounds like the Siberian tundra. Always buy your boots at least a half size bigger than you usually do so you can layer in all those socks. Another thing if you're feeling frumpy is I like to wear a scarf. Um, it might seem like another layer, another way to feel bigger than you really are, but that vertical line breaking up your outfit can really give you a more taller slimming effect or leaving your jacket open, which is that even an option if you live in Canada? I don't know, it's so cold out. Um, that vertical space between the coat zippers um, also gives you that kind of illusion that you're taller and leaner than you really are. By the way, taller and leaner is not everything. You can be just as happy even if you're more of a triangle than a rectangle. Okay, a lot of girls complaining about static. I feel you, but it's actually something I don't struggle with as much as you would imagine. One, we do run humidifiers through our house, so that's definitely key. Honestly, you're probably gonna feel it in your skin before you feel it in all the static on your clothes. Like, your skin is just happier with a little bit of moisture in the air. You could overdo it too, like don't like, breed mold in your house or anything either. But definitely run a humidifier maybe close to your closet. Also, I like to wear a lot of hand lotion and stuff so my hands are one, soft and not snagging on my clothes. But also, I feel like if you have, you know, just some moisture on your hands and stuff, as you're getting dressed, it kind of eliminates some of that electricity in the air. Also, I never over dry my clothes. You can actually run your dryer on medium heat and it won't make everything so, so dry. Or what you can do with your like dresses and skirt loads, um, I don't do this because I just throw all me and the kids stuff together. But what you can do is um, hang up your dresses and stuff half wet yet. Just use the first 15, 20 minutes of the cycle to get your clothes, you know, semi dried so that they're like more fluffy and soft and then put them on hangers and they can dry the rest of the way. Another thing I like to do periodically is to put vinegar in my fabric softener area in my washer. I think this is okay for most washer and dryer units. Don't quote me on it. Soon I'll have everybody running to their appliance guy for repairs. Um, but yeah, you can look into it. It was totally fine for mine. And I'm not sure what it is with the vinegar, but it works like a great natural fabric softener and it doesn't create as much static buildup. I don't use dryer balls. I hear they kind of had the same effect. Also, I actually try to avoid wearing slips in the winter because I have leggings underneath. I feel like that's the extra layer or whatever. You just start to feel like very frumpy and like too many layers, but you do you, whatever. Um, what I like to do is when I'm getting dressed is I'll just run my hands under the cold water for a second and then I will take my damp hands and run them up and down my legs 
um, before I put my skirt on or whatever. Again, you're gonna have more problems with this when you're wearing a maxi dress or a maxi skirt. That always just ends up creating more static naturally. How to not look bulky on the top half is a struggle these days. Again, it's kind of tricky. Um, maybe don't buy coats with like big shoulder pads, but also I think it's fine to be a little more bulky on top if you're a little more streamlined down below your waist. I like the look of a pencil skirt, but I feel like I can never pull it off. I always seem to look like I have a small pregnant belly in them. So wearing dresses is actually, I feel like harder if you feel like you're in that awkward stage of people asking you if you're pregnant and you're not and that kind of thing. I, I get it. Um, it's not like skinniness is everything, but it's also not fun if somebody is thinking you're expecting and you're not. But wearing dresses, it's just like all one thing, right? And so it's very obvious if there's like a bump. Whereas I feel like skirts can be your friend. They can actually disguise that area, especially like denim jean skirts. They kind of have that fly, which is kind of a lump to begin with. People expect to see that. Also, it can be really bad for you if your skirt is super tight up high. It can like put push organs around where they shouldn't be. So be definitely be cautious about that. But if you're shopping for midi skirts, maybe look for more wider bands that are kind of supportive and kind of suck you in a little bit, not too much. I know it's kind of a fine line. Um, and like trying things on in store is really where it's at. And that's super hard in the modest fashion community. You know, there's not a lot of storefronts that sell exclusively modest stuff. There's Inherit Clothing Company in Morris, Minnesota the Main Street Exchange here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And let me know if you know of others down below because it is so nice when you get to actually try things on in person. Get your right size, things that actually fit you. Um, but yeah, I think you can make skirts work for you. Just be kind of aware of those things. Someone says their newest favorite winter style is a cute sweatshirt with a jean skirt. You know, you can hardly go wrong with that. It's super classic, classy. Nobody's gonna say you're trying too hard. Nobody's gonna say you didn't try enough. It's comfortable, it's like very um, sturdy. Yeah, if you get a good jean skirt that fits you well, that's like a gem. And then, you know, just switch out with fun different sweaters, cardigans, and you can like share, show your personality a little bit more with like what cable knit sweater you pick out for the day, you know? Someone says, I quit caring about how I look when it's insanely hot or cold. If I do care, I usually waste my efforts thanks to the humidity or whatever form of precipitation is attacking us. You know, I think that is good to address. Sometimes it's okay if you don't look your 100% best. You know, it is your spirit and your welcomeness, your attitude of hospitality about you that um, people will probably remember more than, oh yeah, her outfit looked a little lumpy and bumpy, you know? I think actually for me, one of the struggles is tr the cleanliness part with like snotty kids and stuff. I just shudder to think about the times that I've talk to somebody and there was like something on my shirt or like hairs in the back because I couldn't see them to lint roll them or whatever. So I don't know. You know, we're just all trying our best out here, guys. Oh, I love this. She says, my struggle is that adding layers to a skirt or dress outfit often makes me look chunky and frumpy. I'm very short and round already. Plus I hate how all the layers stick to each other, especially when I layer leggings under a skirt or two, long sleeve shirts under each other. I'm officially in grimace and wait for spring mode. <laughs> That's from Little's Healthy Space. You're hilarious. I would say in that case, um, if you're just grimacing and waiting till spring, maybe all black is not what you should do. Maybe buy a coat in like a color that you feel good in that brings out the color of your eyes or the flush of your cheeks or something like that so you can at least feel like you look rosy and cute in some way. Even if your shape is not maybe the best you have to offer normally. Also, I did want to bring up here like, who are y'all talking to when you're totally bundled up in your big giant winter ski coat and stuff? Like, if they're judging your fashion attire, most times when I'm out in the bitter freezing cold and I'm passing people, we're just trying to get indoors, like get to our destination. You know, those cold parking lots are the worst. So yeah, maybe we just need to lower our standards a little bit in, when we're out in the cold elements like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I wanna direct you down to the description box because you're gonna find a lot of different links down there for a lot of the things that I mentioned, skirts that I showed. And let me know one positive thing that you love about living in a cold weather climate, if you do. And if you don't, tell us one thing you kind of miss or wish you had living in a not cold climate. Honestly, most days I'm jealous of you guys. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully with a more ladylike voice. Bye everyone.